Here's some useful vocabulary when we're dealing with disease uh, disorder. A disorder is just an abnormality of the body, and it's not very um, specific. Whereas disease tends to uh, include a description of the signs and symptoms. And, and what does that mean? Well, a symptom is a subjective quality. So what I'm saying here is um, the patient describes their chief complaint. Oh, I have this ache in my back. Oh, Whereas a sign is an objective quality that can be measured. So there we can use a stethoscope and listen to the heart, uh, perhaps get a blood pressure. And so a sign is something that um, is uh, a little more uh, easier to record and detect. Whereas the symptoms, sometimes students, uh, patients have a, a referred pain or um, uh, lots of things going on there. Lesion, that's an anatomical sign of disease. So I'm talking about a part of the body. Uh, it's not just a scrape. We sometimes think of lesion as a scrape, but it could be a swelling, a tumor, a rash, some sort of an inflamed, unusual, uh, usually a surface a structure, even if it's a internal lining. Physiologic, that means changes in activity. So the person has a fever, uh, maybe their blood pressure is high, paralysis. Epidemiology is the study of how diseases occur and spread. Uh, and uh, people spend much of their adult life uh, hunting down diseases as epidemiologists. Pharmacology, use of drugs to treat and manage disease is the word over there. Oh my gosh. And diagnosis, uh, that's, we use many forms of information. Uh, we use the patient's medical history, symptoms, signs, their chief complaint, that is, why did they come in? What, what's bothering them the most? Those and other things are used to uh, uh, come about, I mean, uh, to devise a diagnosis. Imaging, this is a really exciting area. Uh, many of you, if you haven't yet, you'll go in for some imaging one day. Radiography, or just called x-rays, uh, we, we don't call them x-rays because there's different types of uh, radiography, and, and you'll see. In all radiographs, the x-ray wavelengths pass through the body, and they produce uh, two-dimensional images. And these are the, the reason we use x-rays a lot is, um, well, they're inexpensive and they're fast to perform. Uh, you don't have to inject any um, contrast and the equipment is fairly cheap. Um, solid structures, the word there is solid, S-O, not sold, solid. They appear white and hollow. And uh, hollow, <laughs> God. They appear dark. Okay, come on. Let me get. I got hung up on this solid structure. I, I think. Okay, let's just look at the example here. The spinal cord, the heart. They're fairly solid, so they're going to be white. The lungs here are going to be dark. Um, unless we inject contrast, which I'll talk about. Now, mammography is for soft tissues, and that's where we just back off and we, we don't use the high energy intensity that are used in X-rays. And so you can see here. Um, there's a little dense tissue on that breast, um, and that's where you know a biopsy is warranted. It could just be fibroid or some dense. Uh, there's different grades of densities, and, um, and mammography is still uh, it's a tough area. It's uh, it's useful, but uh, I won't go into that. Uh, densiometer, uh, densiometry is for bones. If you ever heard of a DEXA scan, uh, those, that's to tell if someone's losing bone mass, like osteopenia, osteoporosis. And so you can see here the bony vertebra, and we can see how dense they are with that densiometry. Uh, it's a pretty cool test. Not typically not done to your um, in your 60s and 70s and so forth. And geography, we're still in the x-ray category, just continuing on. Can't fit it all on one slide. Take a look at this. Uh, uh, oh, for urolog urography, we use um, uh, the, the urinary system. Okay, let me just slow down here. 
we have, look at this angiograph. You can see a stenosis or a thinning of that coronary artery. And so this is a problem. Uh, we'll have to run a stent or um, or run a, do a bypass. Yeah, probably bypass. I can't be sure here. Uh, here's that uh, urography here. And you can see kidney stones to the far left coming off of that uh, ureter, ureter going down to the urinary bladder. Um, and we use barium for the GI tract. And here in the center, you can see a lesion, a cancerous lesion on the colon. Looks like maybe the transverse colon. Okay, so these, these, um, this contrast is usually injected. Uh, in some cases, it can be swallowed as barium. Coronary, you think of cardiac. And here on the far right, you can see that computed tomography, angiography, CCTA scan. And it's going to use iodine as contrast and a series of, of x-rays, sometimes hundreds of x-rays. And, and the result is a, a three-dimensional structure. And you can detect blockage, in this case, the coronary. That coronary looks pretty nice. That descending looks pretty nice as well. Pretty healthy heart here. Computed tomography or CT scan it used to be called a CAT scan. That's kind of an older word. Um, X-ray beam uh, enters the body, so uh, we're still dealing with X-rays. X-ray is just a cool um, discovery. Uh, so we get this transverse view, and here you can see the uh, this is the body cavity transverse view of the body cavity, and we get a series of sections. So this is just one slice, and you see another slice, and on and on. Uh, lung tissue. This is all lung tissue. Remember, it's dark if it's not very solid. And so these string, those are signs of emphysema and lung cancer. And interesting, the fellow was, he had a box of cigarettes in his pocket when, or she, whoever it was. That's kind of interesting. Boy, they're in trouble. They, their lungs are a mess. Hmm. Okay, so on to our MRIs, which a lot of people are familiar with, magnetic resonance imaging. High energy magnetic field, and it uses protons. Protons are positively charged um, particles, and they're going to kind of be arranged in relation to that energy field. And, and uh, uh, sometimes we, we, we can't just use a magnetic ray, we have to use radio waves to help us to read the proton pattern. And we get these colorful images. It's used for, for soft tissues, um, and you can see here in the, uh, the brain and other parts, but not very useful for uh, dense tissues like bones. And we certainly can't use it with someone who has metal in their body. Um, let's see, I'm trying to look at, it uh, looks like the, these are the vertebra here, so that's bone right there. It can show tumors, plaques, and arteries, um, brain abnormalities. And it can even show blood flow, so it's a, it's very useful. It tends to be a little pricey, um, and so it's not done unless it's uh, warranted. Ultrasound, also called, well, it produces a sonogram. High frequency sound waves. So these are neat when you have someone who's pregnant or someone who's very fragile, and you don't want to be injecting dyes in their body or subjecting them to lots of uh, rigorous testing. So uh, ultrasound is pretty safe. If there's a wand that's just um, dragged across the surface of the body, and we get these uh, images, in this case a uh, fetal face right here, pretty cool. Radionuclide scanning. Okay, this is nuclear medicine, and you have to wear a special badge, and um, it's really, really quite slick. It's the radioactive uh, particles are injected, it's usually a fluid, and they're absorbed by active tissues. Okay, so, so take a look at this. The most active tissues are going to absorb the uh, uh, radioactive dye, and so you can see where it's active, and unfortunately this is a uh, uh, tumor. Look at the effects of depression, my gosh. Let's try to be happy, okay? Let's um, be thankful. So one of the important things we can do is just be thankful and grateful for um, the good things in our life. Okay. All right, sorry about that. Positron emission tomography, PET scan. It records body physiology. So when I say physiology, okay, it's very different than like an x-ray. It's just giving you a snapshot of dense and not so dense tissue. 
in this case, a PET scan is going to show you activity. So you can see, like, um, again, the intense colors, reds, oranges, or white, very active. And dark areas are kind of the sleepy parts. They're, they're not absorbing much of the uh, radioactive isotope. Finally, endoscopy. Oh, boy, this is sad. It's a, a very bad peptic ulcer, it looks like, to the far left, lower left. Um, Hey, I put these slides together, so um, I picked them out because I think they're really quite cool. Endoscope, it's a, it's a tube-like device, okay, it's, it's um, extended into the patient, and there's an eyepiece and a camera, and there's usually a light as well that illuminates the specimen so we can see what's going on, like a lap laparoscopy, uh, that's a type of endoscopy. There's various types of endoscopy, but they all tend to get it into a lumen, which a lumen means opening. For viewing those tissues. It's an exciting area, by the way. A uh, great career pathway for lots of people. It's not just about taking x rays, it's, um, <laughs> there's a lot going on. All right, hope you enjoyed this. I think that's it. Yeah.